I'm a reader in energy materials at Newcastle University uh, and I lead a small team of researchers um, investigating new devices for converting sunlight into power or fuel. And our research involves um, some fundamental studies on how light interacts with materials and then we use that information to understand how then that goes on to generate power um, and how charges are transported in those materials. And then we use that information to then develop better systems um, for uh, sustainable energy. Uh, we're also interested in the circular economy. So we're interested in how uh, we can um, reuse materials in our devices, but also use our materials to recycle things like carbon dioxide back into fuel or chemical feedstocks. It's really important that we can design better materials that either um, uh, collect energy from sunlight or heat and also transport and store charge really effectively. Uh, it's important that these uh, materials are robust so they need to undergo lots of cycling in a photovoltaic device or a battery um, and if they don't they need to be able to be to self-repair rather than uh, degrade. We also need materials that um, are capable of being uh, earth abundant. So um, we don't want to be limited by the amount of material that's available to us. We need to have enough um, materials for uh, generating all the power that we need on the planet. Um, so those materials, if they're not earth abundant, they need to be either used in extremely small amounts or they need to be able to be recycled effectively at the end of the device's life. It's also really important that those materials aren't competing with other technologies and you see this um, with sort of a competition between energy uh, storage and say displays or um, communications devices. Some things that we're interested in my group is making materials that are processable very easily from solution. So that enables you to put down materials onto lots of different substrates, so glass or plastic or foil, so they can have, they can be really versatile and be used in lots of different applications. Um, and they can also be printed with really high throughput manufacturing, so that can reduce the cost, but also it enables us to make a lot of uh, devices very quickly um, because we don't have a lot of time uh, for the energy transition. So we need to be able to think about how we uh, source our materials. And so it's important that we think about um, as a consumer, but also as a researcher trying to develop new technology, that the materials that we use um, are not contributing to greenhouse gases, but also other types of pollution from mining or conflicts and child labour. So thinking about the whole supply chain for the work that we're doing. There's still plenty of fundamental science that is needed for the energy transition um, so that we can make energy uh, more affordable, sustainable and efficient. So some things that we're looking at is new physics. We're looking at plasmonic systems um, for making solar fuels. But there's also some really interesting work elsewhere in synthetic biology. And the advantage there is that you can use bugs to do things that otherwise are really difficult for chemists. So things like uh, carbon dioxide fixation or nitrogen fixation uh, so that you can make um, really uh, low carbon fertilizer and solve brand challenges like that. Another area that's really challenging is once you've got something in the lab that is exciting, it's very difficult to transfer that into um, a commercial technology because uh, the funding for um, pilot scale testing is, is huge so you can need a few million to be able to scale up your your lab bench reaction or technology uh, and this is very high risk so it's very difficult to find investment at that stage in the research so there's a need for funding in terms of fundamental science uh, in terms of scale up and then also in terms of interdisciplinarity so getting physicists biologists engineers um, chemists all to work together to solve some of these challenges. And then finally, I'm uh, the Newcastle Director for the Centre for Doctoral Training in Renewable Energy at Northeast Universities. And what that's doing is it's generating a pipeline of 60 um, graduates, uh, postgraduates, who um, are equipped with the skills for the energy transition. 
but 60 people is not enough. Um, we need millions. Um, so we need a lot of investment in training uh, so that we can equip uh, the workforce for the net zero transition in the future. And I think the scale of this investment is really important that it actually meets the severity of the situation. So clean and affordable energy is something that affects um, the welfare of every citizen on the planet. And so we should be putting all our efforts into it. 